Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm a say customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, or Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Eloheinu, sing the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we, in our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you. Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel, blessed are you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is a little bit of a doozy. We have... Hang on. Computer. There we go. Exodus 6, 2 through 9, 35. Elohim spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Yahuwah. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as Elohim Almighty. But by my name, Yahuwah, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I heard the groaning of the people of Israel, when, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves. And I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I'll deliver you from the slave, from slavery to them, and I'll redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great, great acts of judgment. I'll take you to be my people, and I'll be your Elohim, and you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I'll bring you into the land that the that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I'll give it to you for a possession. I am Yahweh. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So Yahweh said to Mos Moses, Go and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But Moses said to Yahweh, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I am uncircumcised lips. But Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of the fathers' houses, the son of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Enoch, Palu, Hezra, Camri. These are the clans of Reuben, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal, the son of the Canaanite woman. These are the clans of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations. Gershon, Kohath, Merari. These are the lives of Levi being, the years of the life of Levi being, 137. The sons of Gershon, Libni, Shim, Shimi, by their clans. The sons of Kohath, Amran, Ishar, Hebron and Usiel. The years of the life of Kohath being 133, the sons of Meriari, Mahli, and Mushi. These are the clans of the Levites according to their generations. Amri took as his wife Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. The years of life of Amram being 137. The sons of Isar, Koror, Nepheg, Zikri, the sons of Usiel, Mishiel, Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron took as his wife Elisheba, the daughter of Amenabad, the sister of Nashon. She bore him Nabed, Abihu, Eliezer, in Ithamar, the sons of Korah, Asar, Elkanah, and Abysavith. These are clans of the Horophites. Horahites. Eliezer's son, Aaron's son, took as his wife one of the daughters of Putiel, and she bore him Phine Phineas. And these are the heads of the fathers of the house of Levites by their clans. These are the Aaron and Moses to whom Yahweh said, Bring out the people of Israel. 
and the, from the land of Egypt by their hosts. It was they who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, about bringing out the people of Israel from Egypt, this Moses and this Aaron. On the day when Yahweh spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, Yahweh said to Moses, I am Yahweh. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said to Yahweh, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How will Pharaoh listen to me? And Yahweh said to Moses, See, I have made you like Elohim to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. And your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my host, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. When I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel among them, from among them, Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as Yahweh commanded. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourself by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take off your staff and cast it down before the Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as Yahweh commanded Aaron, cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it, be <laughs> and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and sorcerers, and they, the magic magicians of Egypt also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and they became servants, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refused to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him, and take your hand the staff that turned into a serpent, and you shall say to him, Yahweh the Elohim of Hebrews sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that it may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says Yahweh, By this you shall know that I am Yahweh. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn to blood. The fish of the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink. And the Egyptians will go weary of drinking the water from the Nile. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch it, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all the, their pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did as Yahweh Commanded, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up his staff and struck the water in the Nile. And all the water in the Nile turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile died. And the Nile stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened. And he would not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house. He did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink, and they could not drink the water from the Nile. Seven full days passed after Yahweh had struck the Nile. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says Yahweh, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will plague all your country with frogs. The Nile shall swarm with frogs that shall come up into your houses and into your bedrooms and on your bed and into your houses of your servants and your people and into your ovens and into your kneading bowls. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on your servants. And Yahweh said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers and over the canals and over the pools and make the frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the, land, the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same thing by their secret arts, and made frogs come up on the, on, the, on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with Yahweh to take away the frogs from me, and, send, and from my people. And I'll let the people go sacrifice to Yahweh. Moses said to Pharaoh, be pleased to command me when I am 
who plead for you and for your servants and for your people, that the frogs be cut off from you and your houses and be left only in the Nile. <coughs> Excuse me. And he said, Tomorrow Moses said, Be as you say, so that you know so that you may know that there is no one like Yahweh our Elohim. The frog shall go away from you, and your houses and your servants and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. So Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to Yahweh about the frogs, as he agreed with Pharaoh, and Yahweh did according to the words of Moses. The frogs died out in the houses, the courtyards, and the field, and they gathered them together in heaps in the land, saying, But when Moses saw was respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, as Yahweh had said. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your sand, strike the dust of the earth, so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dirt, the dust of the earth. And there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. The Egyptians tried their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of Elohim. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to him, as Yahweh had said. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh. As he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus says Yahweh, Let my people go, that they may serve me, or else I will not let my people go. Behold, I will send swarms of flies on you, and your servants, and your, and your people, and into your houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be fair, filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of, of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am El Yahweh in the midst of the earth, that I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this shine shall happen. And Yahweh did so. There came great swarms of flies into the houses of Pharaoh, into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses throughout all the land of Egypt. The land was ruined by the swarm of flies. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your Elohim within the land. But Moses said it would not be right to do so. For the offering we shall sacrifice to Yahweh and Elohim are an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offerings abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, they will they will will they not stone us? We must go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahweh our Elohim as he tells us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go to sacrifice to Yahweh your Elohim in the wilderness. Only you must not go very far. Plead for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going out. From you, and I will plead with Yahweh that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only not Pharaoh cheat again by not letting the people go to sacrifice to Yahweh. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Yahweh. Yahweh did as Moses asked and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also. It did not let the people go. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Go and Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says Yahweh the Elohim of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of, of Yahweh will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, and the herds, and the flocks. But Yahweh will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And Yahweh set a time, saying, Tomorrow Yahweh will do this thing in the land, and the next day Yahweh did this thing. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh set, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become a fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and become boils, breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. 
So they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils breaking out and sores on man and beast. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as Yahweh had spoken to Moses. <coughs> Then Yahweh said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues upon all my, all my plagues on yourself and on your servants and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the land in all the earth. For now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence. And you would have been cut off from the earth, but for this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Behold, around this time, about this time tomorrow, I'll cause heavy hail to fall. Never such as has been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore, Get your livestock and all that you have in the fields in a safe shelter, for every man and beast that is in the field is not brought home will die when the hail falls on him. Then whoever feared the words of Yahuwah among the servants and of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and the livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of Yahuwah left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven that they, so that they, there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man and beasts and every plant in the field, in all the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and Yahweh sent thunder and hail, and fire ran down to the earth. And Yahweh rained down, and Yahweh ran hail upon the land of Egypt. There was hail and fire coming continuously in the midst of the hail. Very heavy hail, such as had never been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, this time I have sinned. Yahweh is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with Yahweh, for there has been enough of Elohim's thunder and hail. I'll let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I'll stretch out my hands to Yahweh. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is Yahweh's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not fear, yet fear Yah Yahweh Elohim. The flax and the barley were struck down, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in the bud. But the wheat and the emmer were not struck down, for they are late in coming up. So Moses went out of the city of Pharaoh, and stretched out his hand to Yahweh. And the thunder and hail ceased, and, no, and the rain no longer poured upon the earth. But when Pharaoh saw the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet again and hardened his heart. He and his servants, so that... So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people of Israel go, just as Yahweh had spoken. <coughs> Blessed art thou, Lord, uh, Adonai Elohim, your king universe, who gives the Torah of Jews to serve everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, Malakalom, Ashna.
Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm gonna say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Donai Elohim, O King of the Universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and, and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and set your Torah for sick, fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, of Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, your king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Ezekiel 28, 25 through 29, 21. <clears throat> Thus says... Lord Elohim, when I gather the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and manifest my holiness in them in the sight of the nations, they shall dwell in their own land, that I gave to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell in it, and they shall build houses and plant vineyards, and they shall dwell securely. When I execute judgments upon all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt, they will know that I am Yahweh their Elohim. <coughs> In the tenth year, in the tenth month, and on the twelfth day of the month, the word of Yahweh came to me. Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus says Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lies in the midst of his streams. Thus says, My Nile is my own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws, and I'll make and make the fish of your streams stick to your scales, and I'll draw up out of the midst of your streams with all the fish on your, of your streams that stick to your scales, and I will cast you out into the wilderness, you and all the fish of your streams, and you shall fall on the open field, and not be brought together or gathered. To the beasts of the earth and to the birds of the heaven I give you as food. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am Yahweh. Because you have been a staff of reed to the house of, to the house of Israel, when they grasped and grasped you with their hands, you broke and tore at their shoulders. And when they leaned on you, you broke and made all their lions to shake. Therefore, thus says. <coughs> The Lord Elohim, behold, I will bring a sword upon you and will cut off from you a man and beast. Cut off from you, man and beast. And the land of Egypt shall be a desolation and a waste, and they will know that I am Lord. <coughs> because you said, an isle is mine, and I made it. Therefore, behold, I am against you and against your streams. And I'll make the land of Egypt an utter waste and desolation from Migdal to Syene, and as far as the border of Cush. No foot of man shall pass through it, and no foot of beast shall pass through it, and it shall be uninhabited forty years. And I'll make the land of Egypt a desolation in the midst of desolated countries. And her city shall be a desolation forty years among the cities that are laid waste. I'll scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries. For thus says the Lord Elohim, at the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples among whom they were scattered, and I will restore the fortunes of Egypt, and bring them back to the lands of Pathros, the land of their origin. And there they shall be a lowly kingdom, it shall be the most lowly of kingdoms, and never again exalt itself above the nations. And I will make them so small that they will never again rule over the nations, and it shall never again be reliance, the reliance of the house of Israel. Recalling their iniquity, when they turn to them for aid, then they will know that I am the Lord Elohim. <clears throat> in the twentieth year, in the first month of the first day of the month, the word of, of Adonai came to me, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made his army labor against Tyre. And every head was made bald, and every shoulder was rubbed bare. Yet neither he, he nor his army got anything from Tyre to pay for the labor that he had performed against her. Therefore, thus says 
Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall carry off its wealth, and despoil it, and plunder it, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt as his payment for which he labored, because they worked for me, declares Adonai Elohim. On that day I will cause a horn to spring up for the house of Israel, and I will open your lips among them, and they will know that I am Yahweh. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King Universe, who gave the Torah of truth and said everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, give her the Torah. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malakalom, Master. Natar Lanu, Tereti Mat, Vaishie, Alom Natar Betagenu, Brukata Adonai, Natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake, fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed you, Adonai. Elohim, you king in universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence soon and let you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Vayera. Three. And it is... Matthew 12, 1 through 14. At that time, Yeshua went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and those who were with him? How he entered the house of Elohim and ate the bread of the, pre of the presence? which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only those who were priests. Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You will not have condemned the Gentiles. Hang on. You will not have condemned the guiltless. Oops. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue, and a man was standing there with a withered hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath so that they, could, so that they might accuse him? He said to them, Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Or how much more valuable is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on a Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And the man stretched out, and it was restored healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you king universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O. Oh, blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai Elohim, you malak alom. Asar neta alanu, toret emet, vaishie alom, nata betekinu, brukata Adonai natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I must say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King Universe, who sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. 
Please Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Bless you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Bless you, Adonai Elohim, your king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us a Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence soon and I knew you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is the fourth read of Vayera. And it is Romans 9, 14 through 24. What shall we say then? Is the injustice on Elohim's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I have the mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on Elohim, who has mercy. For the scriptures say to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name will might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O oh man, to answer back to Elohim? What will it, will what is molded say to its molder, why have you made me like this? Has a potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and for another for dishonorable use? What if Elohim desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power has endured with much patient vessel with wrath per, uh, pre prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy which he has prepared for beforehand for glory, even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. <laughs> Blessed are thou, Adonai Elaine, your king universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Burgata Adonai Elaine, you Malak alone. Asher Natal Anu Tarat Imet. Hey, there he goes. Hello, all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, your King Universe, who sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to gross yourself with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Elohim, your King Universe, who chose us from the nations and gave us Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 7, 1. Do not be unequally yoked with the unbelievers, for what partnership has righteous with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Hamashiach with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has a temple of Elohim with idols? For we are the temple of the living Elohim, as Elohim said. I will make my dwelling among them, and walk among them, and I will enter their place, and I will be their Elohim. And they shall be my people. Therefore go out from their midst, and be separate, separated from them, says Adonai. And touch no unclean thing, then I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit and bringing holiness to completion in the fear of Elohim.
Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, your King Universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata, Adonai Elohim, you Malakalom, Ashenatalinu, Teredimet, Vaishie, Alom, Natabeta, Kenyu, Brukata, Adonai, Natina, Torah.